Hi, this is Doug at Wood Spun Round. It is so good to have you back with me in the shop today. We are turning a piece of walnut here. Uh, this is going to be a live edge wing bowl um, out of walnut, a piece that I've had uh, sitting around the shop for a number of years. It's dry as a bone, um, but it, it does turn quite nicely, and I'm excited for you to see the end result. It's taken me a little while to get this this piece done and get this uh, video out for you. We've got new chickens this year, and it's just taken us a while to get everything situated. We had to uh, work on the coop a little bit, but the run, our run was uh, a little too small for the chickens that we got. And so uh, we have expanded that uh, considerably. Now everybody's uh, happy and happy and uh Happy and healthy. I'll spit the words out here in a minute. And we're starting to get uh, some eggs from the new chickens, and we're happy about that. Be glad when they're all producing. Uh, that should be any any time now. They're all about the same, so uh, it won't be long. But this walnut, as I said, has been in my shop for a long time, and uh, it's dry as a bone, so it's a little tough, but it, it's cutting just fine. Uh, what you see here, I'm cutting a tenon that will be on the... Uh, inside of the bowl but I have to reverse it uh, and hold it right now it's just being pinched uh, you see my life center pulled up there on the other side is my chuck but my chuck is not attached it's it's the wood is just being pressed against it so uh, I'm turning a tenon to go on that it's on the top side it will go in my chuck while I turn the bottom uh, the whole shape the whole bottom as well as do, I'm going to do a recess. You'll see that here in just a moment. But here I'm just finishing up that tenon and getting it ready. I've reversed it now. Uh, the tenon is in the chuck. Uh, you can see the uh, uh, dark area there, that dark ring on the very bottom. That's where it was pressed up against the chuck and had slipped a little bit here and there. But I'm shaping the bottom, and this is just a slow process. A lot of air. Uh, we've got about uh, four inches on each end that of wood and the rest uh, the rest of this circle is nothing but air and so I've got it turned up uh, right close to a thousand rpms at this point it's it's balanced pretty well and so it's not a big issue uh, as far as that goes just starting to to cut my recess here, I wanted to go ahead and take care of that. Uh, the wood is solid there, so used a small parting tool to uh, cut the initial circle, give me a, a place to uh, cut my recess to. Went back to my bowl gouge, and I'm just taking out from the center out to the outer edge of that recess. And I'll make a pass or two there, and then I'll take a pass from the outside in uh, just to clean it up and, and have me a nice smooth surface on the inside of that recess. That'll make it easier for me to put my maker's mark and all of that uh, at the very end. Just taking my time there. The wood's hard and in the center uh, it turns a little slower. So it's just a little slower to turn. But I am able by having my feed rate slow I can get a nice smooth cut get that taken care of using my skew on its side here just to clean up that outer edge so that my uh, chuck jaws can get a good uh, grasp on that recess what I'm doing there may look a little backwards to you it, it looks like I'm going against the grain because I'm going from the the far outer edge to the inner uh, or toward the bottom and toward the inner on the outside of the bowl. Well, it is against the grain. But because this is live edge and I don't want to pull the bark off, especially at the very top edge, uh, I have to go against the grain. But then I turn right back around and, and cut up almost to the top, um, going uphill or really downhill with the grain. But it's uphill on that outside of the bowl. Uh, and it gives me a nice smooth surface there. Uh, the sanding was not bad. Um, I'll, you'll see just a little bit of the sanding a little later, but uh, it wasn't bad. I didn't spend a, an inordinate amount of time uh, sanding. Here I'm just trying to uh, get the, the bottom 
transition from the bottom of the bowl up to the side. And, uh, and I've kind of decided I wanted an outward curve. Uh, uh, so this will this is concave on the outside, be convex on the inside of the bowl, uh, a bit opposite of what we normally see, especially with the live edge bowls. But I've been trying to do this and I've gotten myself in too big a hurry. Um, you'll see here in a minute, I had a little trouble this was not a perfect piece of wood, and uh, I had some consequences to using it. Getting a perfect piece of wood is not always what you, not always going to give you the prettiest piece. Uh, so this one had some checks and some cracks and whatnot, and I made the conscious decision to go ahead and use it, knowing that I could have a problem or two. Um, Right there you see I've got a little ledge where I've gone up almost to the top of that one wing. Got rid of that ledge, but I've started back at the bottom. Still trying to make a nice smooth curve from bottom to top. Uh, I, I don't like there to be steps in my curves or big transitions, uh, at least not in this one anyway. I don't want a transition. I want. I want to curve from bottom to top, and so that's what I'm working on. Right there where I stopped and had a little bit of a ledge, it's because I've gone from solid wood to um, a lot of air. Uh, there's not a lot of solid all the way around wood on this piece. Really only at the base for about an inch, inch and a quarter, uh, then it's air, and the further up I go, the more air I've got. So that's a little bit of an issue and, and uh, looks like I've sped up the lay there. I might have been up to 12, 1400. Here's a little bit of the sanding that I do. Um, I do a little bit with the lathe, lathe uh, on power. Um, and this is The speed is turned down to about 500 here. But I do not do a whole lot of sanding under power on this because of those wings. It just is, it's inefficient, and I'm running the risk of not only breaking the bowl, but uh, tearing up my sanding pad as well. And so uh, I do a, just a little bit of this. You notice that the, the uh, uh, face of the sanding pad is wide open in, in both directions. And that's so that the, the wood comes down onto the, about the middle of the sanding pad. Um, I do not want it to catch the upper side of that sanding pad. But I don't even show you, I, I did most of it with the lathe off and uh, uh, the spindle locked so that I could get one area at a time. So I've done all the sanding I wanted to do and I've turned the bowl around. Here I'm starting at the top and I'm working my way down like I would with any normal bowl. But I do have to be very careful. There you can see uh, just how little wood there is and how much air. Um, on that one long wing you see... Uh, a bit of a ledge that's where I stopped and I'm gonna come down I'm trying to work it down just section by section uh, I'll once I get this top part where I'm satisfied with it then I'll work the ledge uh, get rid of that take care of a little more wood uh, so I can go down the side of that bowl just a little more there you can see I'm sweeping out from the wall toward the center I'm getting some of that wood taken away I had taken some away, probably more than I really wanted to when I was working on getting my tenon uh, so that I could do the bottom side, but uh, it's all working out just fine. I'm not getting a whole lot of vibration, but it's just that uh, nervousness of cutting wood air, wood air, wood air, and it's, that's so constant with this bowl. But again, we're up around 1,400 RPM so that... Uh, uh, the the air space is a little less. Now you're gonna see one of the problems with the the cracks that I was talking about here in just a moment. But we're working our way on down the the side wall of the bowl, taking a little more of the meat out so that I can uh, work my way down. Uh, you can only go as far as the heavy meat of that wood is, and and once you hit that you've got to work in toward the center and get rid of some of that extra wood in the middle there uh, so that you can continue on down the wing. I've taken some out and I've gone back 
it's fun here because you can actually see the end of the tool and how it's running parallel to the outside. You're actually seeing inside and outside at the same time. You can see where I start to come away from the wall. That's the wood I'm trying to get rid of so that everything is, is nice and parallel all the way down. I'd stopped and saw a couple of ridges, so I went back. This is not a good idea to go back. Uh, typically, you wanna sand those ridges out. But I made the choice I wanted to try to cut them out, and I, I was able to cut them out mostly. Still had to sand some, but this wood being so dry, it sanded nicely. There you saw the, the reason uh, why those checks were giving me a problem. Uh, because of that, there was a there was a check that went across the my recess and it it came loose, and so uh, I was very fortunate. I've got that rubber pad uh, that's that's on the floor underneath me. And there was no extra damage, but I will tell you this: uh, as I'm returning my recess there, which means I have to uh, reshape the bottom edge of my bowl just a little bit. Um, that was not a big deal. There again, you see those nice ribbons, even though that wood is dry, dry. Um, tool is sharp and I'm, I'm slicing through the wood. I'm not trying to gouge through it, letting the tool do the work. And so I'm getting some nice ribbons there. Uh, back to what I was saying though, uh, one of the checks went through one of the wings. And when, it, when that bolt came off the lay there a few moments ago, didn't really do any damage but I found that one of my checks had uh, caused some extra vibration. One of the wings was awfully thin, and uh, in fact, uh, it had cracked, or the, the crack that was already there was uh, exacerbated just a bit. And so uh, I don't think you see me go ahead and, and chip it off, uh, but I just barely touched it, and it, it came off in a nice straight line all the way across. Um, it, it turns out to be not a big deal, but when I do some of my final sanding, you'll see uh, where I sand across that edge just to make it smooth. Finishing up getting that recess squared away, getting it just a touch deeper. I did have to take off a bit of the foot because it was where it had broken out where that chip was. That wing there, that's the one that, that kind of breaks off a little later. I did get my, my face shield in the way. At least I have it down. I, I didn't have it up, uh, but I just stuck my head between the, the uh, bowl and the camera. But this recess, because of when everything took place, I had plenty of wood there in the bottom of the bowl. Uh, so I can make my recess or redo the recess uh, so that it works out with, with the new bottom of the bowl, uh, the new foot that I had to, to clean up. So we're going to turn it around. There we go. It's turned around. Don't know where I went. Anyway. Turned around, uh, changed the angle of the camera. You can see better now what's going on. You can barely see the hint of that wing flying around. We're working on getting more of the meat out here so that I can work right on down the right on down the wing of the bowl. Uh, we're much deeper now. But you notice that cone is still there. That cone, I, I leave that cone intentionally and just work it away bit by bit as I work deeper into the bowl. But that cone helps take away a lot of the vibration that normally comes from this type of turning. With these wings, uh, it becomes even more important than it is with the regular round bowl because those wings get, um, they have the possibility of getting very flimsy, having a lot of vibration in them. One of the wings here did because of uh, one of the cracks that was already in the log uh, came down that wing. 
the other one was was pretty solid so uh, i never had any trouble with the one wing but the one uh, did get it ended up vibrating and getting thin on me here we're just working that cone on down this was actually some of the hardest wood was what I found in the cone here. Even though this is inside the bowl, it's like turning the outside of a bowl, uh, go from the high point to the low point. Uh, that way I've got the grain that is supporting the grain that I'm cutting. You can go straight across, it's fine. That's kind of what I'm doing right here. Uh, cutting that center down just a little bit. That By cutting it flat across there, it gives me access to then go down that cone, uh, working some more of that wood out of the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, um, uh, Normally, I use Axe products, the Axe uh, abrasive paste and the Axe polishing and restoring paste on my pieces. I, I really like that finish. I'm not going to use it on this for very obvious reasons. Um, those wings flying around, that I just cannot um, take it off the way you normally take it off. Uh, I could have done it by hand, um, but I just I chose not to. I decided. With the roughness of this bowl, the, the rough edges, the live edges that are still going to be on there, um, I decided I wanted to have um, a counterpoint to that roughness. And so I'm going to put a lacquer finish on this particular piece. Um, that's one of the things that made it slow getting this video out. Uh, I had the lacquer done uh, a week ago. I had lacquer on a week ago. And I wanted to give it uh, two or three days, and I wanted to buff it. Um, I, I know why I wanted to buff it. It was a thing in my own head uh, more than anything. Um, but when I buffed it, it made a mess of my lacquer finish. I'm not sure if it was a lacquer or if it was the, the buffing compounds that I used. Uh, I've got one wheel that's, that's goofy. Uh, I'm not sure what happened to it, but it, it's messed up. I need to re replace it. And then uh, uh, another compound uh, just seems to gum up every time I use it. And I think it's because of the first one. So anyway, uh, sanded all of that off by hand uh, and went back and, and lacquered it. I've got uh, pretty close to 20 coats of lacquer on it at this point. Uh, and you'll see that in the in the stills at the end of the video. Thought I'd cut a little more of this out than I have, but it's all right. It allows us to chat just a little bit. While I'm finishing this portion up, let me just remind you, uh, Wednesday nights, 7 o'clock Eastern Time, uh, woodworkers, uh, excuse me, Worldwide Wood Turners uh, meets on, on uh, Zoom. Uh, if you'd like to join us, uh, we'd love to have you. Uh, you. You come in by going to the website, which is worldwidewoodturners.org, O-R-G. Um, uh, I look it up on my phone. I have to scroll down. Uh, if you're on your computer, you may not even have to scroll down, but there's a button that says, Go to Meeting. You click on that button and it'll take you automatically over to Zoom. If you've got Zoom downloaded already, you just click uh, go, just go to meeting. If you don't have it, you can uh, download it right there. And, and after you get it downloaded, uh, you have the option uh, to go into the meeting. And uh, there's no charge for it. There's no membership fees, no dues, no paperwork to fill out, none of that kind of thing. Uh, you simply go to Worldwide Wood Turners. If you come to the meeting, you are a member. Um, it's a great place to show what you've been working on if you have something you want to share. Um, if not, you can sit back and just kind of relax and look at everything else that other people are showing. We typically have a demonstration 
Uh, I demo from time to time. Uh, demos go an hour to an hour and a half. Um, but there are also times where you can ask questions if, if something is giving you a hard time. Um, fella in uh, the last meeting uh, was having some lines that were showing up in most of his turnings. And we kind of figured out that, that probably what it is is he's pushing the heel of his of his uh, bowl gouge just a little too hard. And the, that hard edge was leaving a line from time to time. Um, we suggested that he grind a secondary bevel onto his gouge and, and uh, see if that didn't help. And if it does help, he'll come back next week and say, hey, that worked perfectly. Thanks for the help. If it didn't work, he'll come back and share it with us. And uh, then we'll come up with another idea of, of why he's getting these lines uh, that look like bruising to most of us um, and help him out. Well, I'm getting close to finish turning. I'm just using a scraper here just to finish, get a couple little places. Um, I'm not going to go very high up on that wing, but I am going to go up on the wing with the scraper uh, just to get a couple of those ridges, especially in the transition area. Been watching some Richard Rafen uh, videos, and he uses a, a scraper to finish all of his bowls. Probably the last old. 5% or less, but it's still using a scraper. But you see there, I've got it turned up on edge. I'm not sticking it straight into the wood. It's a little less aggressive here uh, by turning it up that way, but it does a phenomenal job. There I'm sanding that, that edge where that wing broke off. Like I said, I barely touched it and it snapped um, real even across there. There's just a, a place going across the grain there that uh, caused a weak area. So I'm sanding off, uh, make it nice and smooth. I'm not gonna show you a whole lot of the sanding here because you've seen sanding and, it, uh, and I've got a whole video on sanding. Uh, cleaning it off with some alcohol after I've done all my sanding. I'm done with the turning part. And so uh, I've blown it good and I'm using a paper towel with some denature alcohol just to wipe out any of the dust that's left. And then I'm going to use a Scotch Bright. Uh, the alcohol raised the grain a little bit, so I've got the gray Scotch Bright. I'm just going to knock it back here and knock all those little fuzzies before I put on the sanding sealer. Those gush brights do a great job. Um, without the sandpaper, it's I, I don't know what the grid of this particular uh, pad is, this gray pad, but it, it does a, a really good job. It's, it's still soft. It does not cause scratches. Um, I've put a little sanding sealer on there as well. This is, this is uh, some lacquer. This is the first coat of lacquer. I did this one on the lathe under power, um, but then I, I build up, um, after this dries, I will buff it back with the, that gray scotch bright. And I'll put some more on. Um, this, this right here is just going on the edge, uh, on the edge of the bark. And there you see I've built it up a bit, and I'm just, I'm actually gone to the, the uh, maroon scotch bright. Um, I've built it up a little bit. I probably have a run there, or at least a sag. And so I'm just using that. It's a little bit uh, more abrasive than the gray, uh, but still very soft. See there, just putting on a little more lacquer, just another coat, uh, this time off of the lathe. Um, have a Lazy Susan sitting on the lathe bed with this other board. And there you have it. It's been good to have you with me today, and uh, this was quite the project. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you have, if you please uh, put the thumbs up. Uh, maybe you haven't liked it. Go ahead and put a thumbs down. Either way, if you'll give me a reason or, or just tell me what you like or what you don't like about it, and uh, maybe we can make some adjustments if you don't like about it or if you don't like it. Um, if you're not already a subscriber, I'd really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button. 
um, and just let uh, uh, YouTube know that you enjoy my content. Don't forget, we're going to have a giveaway at 750 subscribers, so that's coming pretty quickly. Tell your friends. Hope to see you next time as we spin them around in the wood shop. This is Doug, and until next time, I hope you're able to spin them around.